My name is Rachel Trombetta. I'm the CIO of GE Energy Storage. It is a brand new manufacturing facility and a new technology that GE has invested in. We've partnered with the Global Research over the past 10 years, not only for our product line, but as well as to how to make a smart manufacturing yeah. plan. Is what is the future? My manufacturing plan is that future, and I hope during the next 30 minutes or so I can walk you through how we've got to where we're at, where we're growing, and where we hope to be in the next few years. Motive, where on our production line we have something coming off every 15 seconds. So over the past 10 years, this is the birth of how GE Energy Storage came to be. In 2001, GE Transportation decided that they wanted to look for an alternative, more safety conscious device to put on their locomotives and also their off-highway mining vehicles. From 2002 to 2006, GE Global Research evaluated all kinds of different technologies and they decided that they wanted to go to sodium nickel. When they found out that that was a technology they wanted to use, they actually went out globally looking for some partner that used that technology. And that partner, we acquired them in 2008. It's actually Beta up in Burton-on-Trent. And they've been working with the sodium nickel based chemistry for the past 40 years. And we really think that's our competitive advantage because it is a lot safer. It's got a longer lifeline. In 2009, we got permission from the CEO of General Electric to go ahead and start building, a, looking for a place to build a manufacturing plant, hire employees, put our processes together. This is when our partnership with GE Intelligent Platforms really began. Just as the gentleman before me spoke, when you're creating a new environment, you've got to work with all kinds of different partners in your supply chain, whether it's your engineering team, your OEM manufacturers on the floor. And this was key. Intelligent Platforms came in with us and taught us how to put our memory maps together on all of our OEM devices. So from the first day that we had a piece of equipment come into our facility, we could get the data off of that. Then in 2012, we were officially announced as a company. So you think about that, we're less than two years in of actually building product and delivering it to our customers in the field. And the next few slides will show you how our manufacturing ability has made us more competitive because we continue to learn. We are a global company based in Schenectady, New York. As I said, our customer innovation center is here in Burton-on-Trent. Over 50% of our salaried employees are engineering based. They've all got different reasons that they need to consume data. Some of it might be to, for process improvement. Some of it might be we need to change our product line. And how do you get all this data that we capture every day back into the hands of people that are truly running our business? Our manufacturing plant takes raw materials, brings that in through different chemistries throughout the plant. We've got 25 different process engineers that are continually looking at all of our product lines and making sure that we have statistical process control on each one of our machines, that our quality is in place as we go forward through our manufacturing plant. Then we send that to a battery packaging area. Once it gets to battery packaging, that's when we do final acceptance testing. And we have to run our batteries for 48 hours to make sure that they are running as our customers expect them to do. When we find out that we have a non-performing battery in there, we've got to go back and do diagnostics on that. We capture 25,000 data tags per second in our manufacturing plant. And it takes three weeks of, process, of elapsed time to get all the components into a battery. So imagine you've got this battery running. For math's sake, I'm going to say there's 100 cells in there. There's 50 cells that are good, 50 cells that are bad. What was the process variation throughout your manufacturing plant that went wrong? It took our engineers. We partnered with G Intelligent Platforms a month to mine all that data to find out that one of our controllers on the floor opened an oven door a minute early. So being able to learn that early in our process has been able to, we've been able to reduce our costs by 25% to be competitive and to be in the marketplace, we're gonna have to improve that by another 50%. And by having an intelligent platform prophecy MES suite, that's how we're able to do it. When, they, when we were designing our manufacturing plant, they came in, they partnered with us to make sure that we knew what our lines were gonna be, where our black back flushes were gonna be to make sure that we were taking the data from the MES system and reporting it accurately back into our Oracle ERP system for 
financial reporting. Paper. And in 2011, the U.S. government partnered with the UCLA and about 100 other manufacturing institutes in the U.S. talking about what is the smart manufacturing maturity model. And it's really, you know, taking people, as everyone has said, processes, and how do you put that all together to learn faster? And when I looked at the timeline, we're exactly where we need to be. We've put all of our data in there. We've made sure our data is right. We're learning from it. And being that we're a new manufacturing plant within GE, when I was part of transportation, transportation CIO had the foresight to, let's put in all new pillar applications. We can no longer have five, 10, 15 different systems that don't talk to each other. We don't have the time to have people going into Excel, doing calculations, is this right, is this wrong, making wrong business decisions. So when they built our manufacturing plant, the same people that were trying to hire people, decide what types of machines we needed, were also designing the processes. So that's what, where I really like to think that the people actually come into play here as well. It's not just systems. It's not just the engineers programming something. It's not just the software. But how do you bring this all together? And this is really starting to resonate throughout GE, and it's kind of exciting to be the champion of that across our business. So as I said, the, when I was looking at where my business is from a smart manufacturing model, in 2011, 2012, we put in all of our applications. We decided what our processes were going to be on the manufacturing floor. In 2013, we took a timeout when it came to data. We realized when we were trying to research through all of our data that maybe it wasn't accurate or we weren't capturing the right types of control information. And then 2014 is all about learning from our data. Not only are we partnering with GE Intelligent Platforms, GE also has a new software company called GE Software. And we're taking the data that we get out of our manufacturing and we're putting it up into a big data Hadoop environment and we're creating the new model called plan optimization. So that at any given time if a machine goes down, because just like you, we were, tw were 24 by 7, 365 days a year. So if you've got to figure out how to keep production going and you do have an excursion on your floor, you have a machine go down, what levers can you pull to increase productivity in one area to make sure that you still meet your customer commitments on the back end? And this is extremely exciting. I, I probably get 15 phone calls a week from different people wanting to know how we're using our data in our environment. This is what I call my ecosystem. When I was doing my little research assignment, you know, what is supply chain? What does it mean? How do all these different applications work together? Our Prophecy MES suite is really the center of how our manufacturing plant works. Every operator in the plant has a login or has an RFID or a scanner where they trace everything they do. We do all of our quality management there, our inventory controls. We have two instances of prophecy running that I'll get into a little bit. Then when we get the real-time data from our machines and our MES system through the CPLC controllers, we send that over to our maintenance system. So the maintenance team automatically knows what tools do they need to take them with them, how fast do they have to get that up, what's the impact to production. And that's where we're really starting to get into the deep analytical world. One thing that is challenging when you have a totally automated plant is making sure that it's up and running 100% of the time. I don't know how many times that someone comes to me and tells me, oh, by the way, we're putting in this new XY machine. I need to get it on the network. And I asked, did it need power? Well, yes, we worked with maintenance on power. I said, well, you also need a network connection to it, and I've got a program that control system into our MES environment to make sure that we're capturing the data that we need. We also have two of the U.S.'s telecom companies, AT&T and Verizon, have both put distributed antenna systems in our facilities so that we can, if wireless goes down for some reason on my wide area network through GE, I've got a backup plan that I can go cellular. And one of the reasons we're partnering to do that is as we make our product we know how it runs in our manufacturing plant. Being that we're new, we need to also, when we put these products out in the field, make sure that they can phone back home, talk to us, tell us their performance so that we can continue to learn from that. And those two telecom partners are gonna be my global integrators to be able to have a total life cycle understanding of what our product line is. 
We have approximately 50 iPads throughout our manufacturing plant. Everybody has a smartphone. If any one of our machines go down, it gives an automatic text alert. We had an electrical storm back in November that took power out in a good part of our community. We do have backup generators. Our plant was running, but every one of our process engineers got text on their met on their machines, they were able to log in from their iPads and go in and make sure that the, all the machines were still within the statistical process control limit. Being that we are a chemical processing plant, before we put it into packaging, we use the prophecy suite to do our statistical process control to make sure that everything is in its upper and lower spec limit. We do burst strength testing on ceramic tubings, so it actually measures what how many particles came out of a break to make sure that it's within our specification limits. We also have a facilities maintenance system where we have over 100 pieces of equipment in our manufacturing plant that is continually being monitored. Again, with the chemical processing that we do, if the water purification that we use to mix or the humidity or the air conditioner is not right, it can cost us hundreds of thousands of dollars within a week's time by the time you get our product line all the way through. This is where we've partnered with intelligent platforms. And just as everyone else has been saying, you know, it's all about the people. What we have found in our business is we don't need to pay engineers to spend time weeks and weeks pulling Excel spreadsheets, running all kinds of variation tests, Weeble tests. We need to give them a tool to where they can have data at their fingertips. It doesn't matter what your persona is in the business. If you're the plant manager or if you're the operator on the floor, you should be able to visibly see the information that you need to make a real-time decision. Again, when I say we have something coming out every 15 seconds, every minute that this our system is down is $475 to the cost of our production line. And then this, I'm going to spend a little bit of time just talking about our two different instances of prophecy that we have. We have our PMCS system, which is our production monitoring and control system. It does real-time data collection, monitoring, and alarming. One of the big things in 2013 is we went through and we put our quality system into that to where we made sure that every portion along in our, our manufacturing line had a statistical process control. Even if it wasn't something you could physically measure, someone had to say that yes, it was good or bad. And that's improved our reliability by 3% in the past four months, which in a operations way. management is another key area where we use our prophecy system for to make sure that we're on target with our yields and throughput and our scrap rate. One of the big things that we're working on the first quarter using the Prophecy Suite is how do we reduce the amount of scrap we have? Today, when I showed you earlier, when we get batteries and we do our final acceptance testing, if that battery doesn't work, we just set it aside. And we've got over $4 million of inventory just sitting there that from past years that we haven't been able to find out what's wrong with it. Now that we have all this data in our system, we can run it back through look for variations and we can open up our batteries and do rework and that's going to bring more value back to our bottom line. And then one of the final things we do is our manufacturing history and genealogy. And this is important as we've seen failures in the field. We're now able to go and look at the serial number, what day was that battery built on and who built it and go all the way back through the, our data and look at what other potential customers could we be at risk at from a quality perspective. And so far, knock on wood, we haven't had to do a warranty claim because of this product is able to keep us safe in that environment. The other system that we use Prophecy for is our facilities management system. So not only are we looking at the process controls to make sure our product is good, we have EHS, environmental health and safety regulations because of the type of material that we make in our facility that we have to report to the U.S. government. That's our single system for that. If that goes down, we have to shut down manufacturing. Utilities, everybody's talked about how much it costs to run a manufacturing plant. We were able to control every utility from an iPad or an, a phone. Our facilities manager is continually, you know, looking online, tweaking things to make sure to keep our costs down. One benefit we have of that is the state of New York actually gives us a tax incentive to do that because we are reducing the cost and the load on the grid.